Hello and welcome to Scott Bright's Fitness Systems. Thank you for clicking on the video. And this video is all about why personal trainers are getting a really stinking bad name in the fitness industry. Please uh, subscribe and please press the bell icon. I do videos nearly every day, either a short video or a long video. This is gonna be a long one going over why I think the personal training industry is going in the wrong direction. So this is 22 years of me being in the fitness industry. I love it like the first day I started. I love getting an inquiry and working with clients and seeing the awesome results that I can get with the stuff that I've learned. So you've got to remember that there's 25,000 personal trainers in the UK, but only 8 million out of 68 million of the population want a personal trainer. Now really the numbers should be double that really in the, the amount of people that want it. But the reason why so low amount of people want it, because they've lost all faith in personal trainers. And the reason why that is, become a personal trainer, you can do an online course. Or you can do a six week course in the classroom. But 90% of them are not taught practical skills on the gym floor and how to really work with people. And that's a real shame because I spoke to three different gyms and they've all said the same. We keep getting these guys coming through that don't even have a proper qualification. Now, even if you look at Indeed, on Indeed, a lot of gyms are advertising for level ones and level twos. Now, back in the day when I did it, you couldn't work in a gym until you had your level three. Whereas now they're, they're weakening their own system in which to, on, on which to make more money off of the PT. Because if you're in the gym, most gyms you've got to pay a rent of 500 to £1,500 a month before you feed and pay yourself, which is crazy, isn't it? When there's only uh, 8 million want personal training and only 3% in the gym want personal training. It's not for everyone, unfortunately. If it was for everyone and say 30% uh, 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 30 million people were having a PT, then there wouldn't be an issue, but there'd still be bad trainers out there or trainers that don't do any assessments. So I've heard trainers going, oh, I do a cost assessment. Oh, so how'd you do that then? Oh, I just uh, get my client to stand in a plumb line and uh, we don't measure anything. I can see that it's improved. Bullshit, it needs to be measured. So when I'm measuring forward head posture, if your head is more than three centimeters forward, this will affect your scaling muscles, this will affect your knees, this will affect your lower back, especially the L5-S1, this will affect your ankles because the five pounds of the whole head going forward will affect your balance system as well. So I measure the spine. So I said to the guy, do you measure the spine then? Oh no, uh, I, 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 I guess it. So you must never guess, you must always assess. Because then when you've got that document and you're charging £185 like me, the client wants to see that document. They want to see the improvement. They want to see the change and not just feel it, especially if they're mathematical, logical type, science type person. They want to see all that documentation. So the next thing that I uh, uh, do is that I test the nerves using this. And then... I measure body fat with the Harpington's body fat calipers. These are the best in the world used by the Olympics in which to get the body fat measurements right. But if you go deeper like I have, you learn that different body fat sites mean different things in the body. So for argument's sake, if you gain a lot of weight around your waist, you've got a cortisol issue. It's not eating too much fat issue which a lot of trainers would think. They'd think, oh, you've got a big belly. Right, we need to beast you. We need to train you as hard as we possibly can until blood is spurting out your fucking ear holes. Now, that, that isn't correct. That is completely wrong. If I see somebody that's morbidly obese or obese, I'm going to give them Tai Chi. I'm going to give them Tai Chi zone type exercises, which are going to push them into parasympathetic balance which are enable them to feel much better and have more energy. The other thing that I've noticed now as well, since I've trained in a couple of big gyms, no one has a program. 
they all say their program is in their head. But when they get a, a shoulder injury, a back injury, a neck injury, or they can't run the marathon that they want to run, or they can't play tennis how they want to play it, or they can't reduce their golf handicap, or improve their drive, it's because they've got no program. They've got no map on knowing what's working and what's not working. The great thing about having a program for every client is that I can track back what's worked and what hasn't worked with the feedback from the client. This is another thing I don't see uh, trainers doing. They don't even really have a humor with their clients. I'm having a giggle with my clients because I love my job. And I say to my clients, I'm gonna take the piss out of you, and you're gonna take the piss out of me and it's fine. It's all about you having a great time in your gym session so you always come back for more. Does that make sense? The other thing with uh, the fitness industry is that you're not, you're not forced to re-educate yourself. So you can do your YMCA like I did. I think I've done about 10 different qualifications to get my, my uh, personal trainer award. And uh, once I did that, I wasn't asked to do anything else again. All I was asked to do was pay for reps, which was a waste of time, it's now closed, to keep my accreditation up when nobody ever asked for it. Which was the same with the US company that I did all my studying from. I stopped paying them for their accreditation because nobody ever asked for it. Nobody said, where's your accreditation, Scott? I'd shown my certificates and 75% of people that I'd shown my certificates to when I very first start working with them, don't, don't care. I've looked on your website, Scott. I can see you're highly qualified. I don't need to see that. Fine. Do you see what I mean? But I feel better knowing that they know that I'm not fake and I'm not playing a game or taking the piss. Does that make sense? So the only way the personal training industry is going to change is if the personal trainers themselves change. So there's only 1% of us that are doing a six-year degree. There's only 1% of us that are giving proper proper well-designed programs out for their clients and not making it cookie cutter and giving every train every client the same program every client i see have a different program because they have a a different issue or they have different goals so if a client said to me i want to get gain five inches on my arms i tell them that's impossible but i would design them a an arm training program to get arm size whereas if i've got a golfer and he's a uh, handicap is 12 and he wants to get it down to eight I would make sure that his whole program is designed around his golf the same with the tennis player the same with you know it depends what goals that you want if it's just a lady that just wants to lose body fat but doesn't want to use weights and wants to use just cardio I would turn that person down because I don't want to be paid to just press a button and I'd find it boring you know what I mean so I try to be 100% honest, and I think this is really important. A lot of trainers were just bullshit. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. When they know they bloody can't. So in my area where I live, all of them are doing corrective exercise. But none of them have studied it. And if I was standing there watching them train their client, and they know what I've studied, they would be very careful on what they did, because they know that they're BSing and lying to their clients. But obviously the client doesn't know that. So really, really important that, uh, sorry, I just had a message come through. Uh, really, really important that if you are a PT, set a gold standard, get studying, get reading, do as many courses as you can, listen to audio books like my book behind me, or I'm gonna show you now. Uh, so I use this, Body Fat Caliper, then I use this forward head caliper. This is not all what I use, this is just some of it. Then I use these to measure the spine. Then I use that for your nervous system. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to get to the book instead of save turning around. Uh, and here's my book. So that took me uh, two years to get together and it's out there. It's everywhere, it's on audio books, it's on Amazon, it's on hundreds of websites, so if you want to buy it, $6.99. And uh, if you buy the book, if you're a trainer, and you read the book and you give me a good review, I will uh, design you a program once we've chatted on the phone and stuff, 
according to what you want. And normally, my programs are eighty-five pounds. So you get an eighty-five pound uh, for free, really. But there's a you can only do it once you've done the book and I've checked, and you've given me the there's a code in the book that you can only get if you've bought the book. Uh, so really, it's really shocking to see personal trainers still being so bad 22 years on. There is a percentage of them that are still fairly good, uh, but it's a really low amount. So I've got a friend of mine, he's been in the industry as long as me, he's done as many courses as me, uh, and he gets awesome results. Uh, but we've been in the business for 22 years, both together. So it's really important, I'm not, I'm not trying to slate every trainer. All I'm trying to say is, is uh, for us to make the industry better and for trainers to be paid more for the value of what they're doing with their clients, you need to educate yourself more to give more value. Yes, sales and marketing is part of it as well. But if you read The One Minute Salesman, it's all about selling with love and compassion and loving what you do and believing in what you do. And if you can do that like I do, it's easy to get sign-ups. It's easy to get £25,000 out of a client, which I've had a couple of times. So, uh, and remember with pricing, if you're a PT, and everyone in the gym is 50 quid an hour, and you're 50 quid an hour, it doesn't make you look any different, does it? And if you're charging 50 quid an hour, 20 years ago, I was charging £75 an hour. So if you're charging £50 an hour, 20 years on, all your money's going in tax, national insurance, travel and, and gym fees, you're not making any money. You're a complete idiot. You need to get out of the industry. Or send your clients to me. No, I'm only joking. Uh, so if you want to buy my book and get a free program, you're more than welcome. Hope you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hope you've pressed the bell icon to get regular updates. Uh, so I'm not really slating trainers. All I'm just saying is that the fitness industry is in a mess. But it ain't going to change. You know why it's not going to change? I figured this out the other day. The gyms are owned by business CEOs. So then they get the manager that's not a CEO, that's not really a business person, to manage the gym. And he wants to make sure that the gym is making as much money as he can from the members as well as the PTs. And all this money goes to the CEO. Most CEOs don't train not in shape, know absolutely nothing about nutrition, know absolutely nothing about assessments, training and training programs, because all they're in it for is to get the the 3,000 the, the 3, members 50 pounds a month. That's all they're interested in. Does that make sense? There may be 1% or less than 1% of the, of the CEOs that are actually training in the gym and working with a PT they can afford it, right? If they've got 10, five, 3,000 members, 50 pounds a, a month, once they've paid the staff, paid for the equipment and all that, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? And this is why it won't change. It won't change until the CEOs realize that there's a massive turnover of trainers and it's the clients, the customers that pay 50 pounds a month who books a PT, wants to see the regular PT. They don't want the PT that's going to leave in three months. They want the PT that's been there for three years, five years, ten years. Because they know then, one, they're not going to lose their money. Two, the reputation of that PT. And three, most people, when they join a gym, very rarely will they leave. It's the same with the, your gas and electric companies and your phone companies. You won't leave unless you're forced to leave, as in the price goes up or the service is terrible and stuff like that. So this is the same thing with the gyms. Their membership base goes up and down constantly all year, but they don't lose a massive amount of members. But every member that I've spoken to in three different gyms, wow, Scott, you're so qualified. Why, ain't the other tra Why didn't the other trainer tell me that? Why didn't the other trainer tell me I've got a disc herniation and uh, I shouldn't be doing CrossFit. Because the trainers by the, the gyms are not forced to do anything. As long as you've got your level one or your level three and, you, and you're good at sales to make money for them, so you can pay them every month, 
That's all they care about. They don't care about whether you're a master level four chat practitioner like me. All they care about is can you pay them every week or every month? And if you leave, another one of them 25,000 trainers will turn up and go through the same scenario as the last trainer, walk in the floor, can't get anyone to sign up because the other regular trainers have got the core amount of the people that want PT. That's the other thing that you've got to remember, that if you're last in the door, you may be the first one out if you're not good at your sales and your marketing. And to be a PT, I've got to be totally honest with you, is fucking hard work. You've got to mar market online, you've got to market on all social media, you've got to market locally, you've got to be selling yourself constantly all the time. That's why I've done 2,275 videos on TikTok, on YouTube, sorry. Uh, on TikTok, I've done about, I think I've done about 500 or 600 so far. But all this is important marketing because if people don't know the product, they can't buy the product, can they? Does that make sense? But with a saturated market, you need to stand out. You need to be different. You need to make sure your website is page one in Google. You need to make sure that your website has such in-depth information that people stay on your website longer than the other website. Does that make sense? So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it weren't too negative and that you agree with me that there's not enough assessments, trainers don't charge enough, it shouldn't always be eight to 12 repetitions and it shouldn't be 25 exercises per program, which I've seen many times in circuit classes and other things and I just think, this is fucking madness. But never mind. hope you've enjoyed the video. Please click to the link to go to my website if you think about booking me or if you want to buy my book, there's a link down the bottom. And if you've got a comment, please comment down below. Thank you very much. Peace out. Look at them 18 inch guns aged 51. So you can still keep it and still keep going. Thank you. Bye bye.